Hey guys, welcome back. Colleen and Hank here with an awesome amp. I'm so excited to show you guys. Hank's very excited, aren't you? <laughs> so we have here an 80s PV Roadmaster. He's so thrilled. So the Roadmaster is a part of PV's Vintage Tube series that came out in the 80s. And this amp is an absolute tank. It has six output tubes, six 6L6s. Six all of the tubes in here are the original PV tubes, which is really cool, but unfortunately they do need to go. Um, there are some pretty substantial issues with this amp, including the uh, sextet of tubes. Um, the power supply board is pretty fried, or it had been fried in the past and kind of fixed, but we're going to fix it a little bit more permanently and reliably. Um, there's a few other service issues that we're going to do, but otherwise this amp is in pretty good condition. So I'll show you guys a little up close look and then we'll bring it down to the shop. While I have you guys here, I would like to welcome DistroKid to the YouTube channel. DistroKid helps musicians get their music on all major streaming platforms and musicians get to keep 100% of their royalties. We love musician friendly companies. Um, viewers of my channel get 30% off. The link I will post below, but it is distrokid.com slash VIP slash Fazio. So go check it out. All right, here we go. So this is the PV Roadmaster. We've got two inputs, a high and a low gain. And then we have two channels and you can change the channels by pulling this switch right here. That'll engage the normal channel. Otherwise the lead channel is engaged. So we've got a preamp control. You pull it to get the bright function. The pump, which is basically juice. We've got the post volume control, which is like a master, and you can pull it to get a smoother sound, a little less distortion, just a little. Then we've got the EQ, lows, mids, highs. You can pull the high to get a thicker tone, a little creamier. We've got reverb. And then on the normal channel here, we've also got a pull switch on the preamp volume for some brightness and then the post volume, which is the master. And again, you pull to select the normal channel. EQ for the normal channel, presence. So that's what the front panel's looking like on this PV. Coming in from the back here, we can see all of the original PV branded 6L6s. Truly a sight for sore eyes. There really is nothing like the PV logo. So when I replace these tubes, I'm going to replace them with Softec 5881s. It's currently my favorite replacement for 6L6s. We can see that we've got the power transformer, the reverb tank in the back there, and the output transformer. We also have a fan, which is nice to cool all these output tubes. And then we've got a ton of old preamp tubes here. We've got some PV branded 12AT7s. Both 12ATs are PV brand. And then the 12AXs are tongue saws. I believe these are probably all original to the amp. All right, let me give you a general look at this amp here. We've got the power supply board, the control panel board, the preamp tube board, and the output tube board. And these all come out fairly easy, which is great because they're all going to come out for some servicing. So we're gonna start with our focus on this power supply board. We can see that there has been some damage to the board in the past, um, which appears to have been rectified, although I don't know if I like how this has been done. So I'm gonna take this board out and just make it a little bit safer, clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of all of the burnt traces because that can become conductive. Um, definitely gonna replace this resistor because it looks pretty burnt up. I'm going to replace the filter capacitors. So basically this power supply board needs a rebuild. I'm also going to go through, I'm going to remove this board. This is the preamp tube board. 
and I'm going to A, resolder all of the problem areas on this board, specifically the tube sockets. You can see like over time the solder just kind of cracks and becomes thinner. And there's also filter caps on the other side of this board that are the preamp supply caps that I will replace as well while the board is out. And then I'm going to replace these 100 ohm screen resistors for the output tubes and resolder these tube sockets as well. Service the amp, I'll remove the control board and resolder that too. So the whole amp will get a resolder, power supply rebuild, and a general freshening up. So I'm gonna start with the power supply board because it needs the most attention. I'm gonna remove this board, which will entail taking all these connectors off. And I always like to take a picture of the board before I take it apart so that I can reference it when I'm putting back together. I'm gonna replace these four capacitors. I believe they're 100 microfarad at 350. Um, I'm gonna replace this resistor and then I'm going to clean up this board. I'm gonna grind off all of this burnt residue, likely with my Dremel tool. So you'll see me doing that. And then this board should be good to go. I'll check the solder on the other side as well, obviously too, while it's out. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take a break for a moment and talk a little bit about the history of PV. So we're bringing it back to 1960s Mississippi and Hartley PV originally got into building amps out of his parents' basement. He eventually outgrew that and moved his shop to the attic above his father's music store called PV Melody. I believe they sold records and probably some music equipment. Apparently, Hartley PV designed his infamous logo when he was in high school, and I will be paying my respects to that logo later in this video. When you think raunchy, swampy, southern rock, odds are the bands used PV amps. Think Molly Hatchet, Skinnerd. A lot of blues, rock, country artists love using PV amps. The company still exists today. They do a lot more digital equipment, which is cool and all, but to me, the 70s and 80s amps were the creme de la creme of PV products. So the main issue here is this 1.5 amp fuse is blown. This is the 1.5 amp fuse that blew. Basically, if there's a short or something going wrong in the power supply, this will blow and it will stop the power from getting to the circuit entirely. So I'm gonna cut this yellow wire. This is one of the high voltage secondaries from the power transformer. So I don't really love how this was repaired. I mean, it's okay, not the best. I'm just gonna remove these capacitors and resistor so I can have access to cleaning the board. Right, so given how you can kind of see this burnt area through the board, um, I might end up having to just completely remove this part of the board. And if I do that, it's going to cut into this trace. So I will have to hardwire whatever traces I cut into. But it's worth it to make sure that all of the carbon is out of there to avoid any conductive 
stuff because that could be bad and cause could be a fire hazard and then i'm going to just further remove this burnt patch right here and then i'm going to secure this back it connects to the fuse right here and unfortunately there's no other terminals that i can really use to attach it in like a nicer way but i'm going to do my best to make it nice and safe So as you can see, I did have to drill entirely through the board to remove all of that burnt residue. And that interrupted this connection right here. So I'll just end up having to hardwire that, which is no big deal. But it's best just to make sure that it's removed best as possible. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this area here. It's not as bad, but I just wanna clean it up on this side at least. All right, and now I'm going to replace these filter caps. They're 100 microfarad at 350 volts. I'm gonna replace this burnt 400 ohm 10 watt resistor with this new one. And I'm gonna bend the leads in a way that'll give it a little extra support sitting up over the board so it's not like directly touching the board and heating the board up. So you can see it just goes in this far and it'll stay off the board enough so that the heat won't like be all concentrated where the resistor is and cause overheating of the board. Okay, so I went ahead and re-soldered the entire circuit board because I'm gonna have to do that with all of these boards. So while this one was out, I just went ahead and did that. I am going to replace this blown 1.5 amp fuse.
And on this blown fuse, you can actually see that it's blown. You can see this dark mark right here, and there's a break in the filament. So you can actually visually see that this fuse is blown. Sometimes the fuses don't look blown, but the surefire way to tell is to measure it with your continuity checker. If there's continuity, it's not blown. All right, so now I'm going to install this board back in here. I'm actually just gonna end up soldering this wire back up and in. Note the Roadmaster power right here. So it's just telling you that this is the power supply board for the PV Roadmaster. And I'm gonna go ahead and hook all these wires back up. Right now I'm prepping this wire to be soldered back onto the circuit board. And to do so, I tin the wire, which means I heat it up and add solder to it. And this will make it stick a lot easier when it comes time to soldering onto the board. I almost forgot, but here's my ground connection that I had to hardwire since I broke the trace from cutting the board. So next, I'm going to remove this front panel control board. I'm going to clean all these controls and re-solder the board. Then while this board is out, it's going to be easy to remove this preamp tube board. I'm going to replace the filter capacitors that are on this board and re-solder it as well. And then the final step is going to be re-soldering the output tube board and replacing these 100 ohm screen resistors. All right, so I have this board loose and now I'm just gonna unscrew this board so it's easier to remove them both. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean off this board. I'm gonna re-solder a lot of the connections that need some work. For example, you can see right here and here, these solder joints are not 100%. So I'm gonna be doing redoing that solder. And then I'm also going to spray out all these pots with deoxit. And then that should be it for this board. So basically now I am just going to solder this entire board, but I do like to start with the biggest problem areas, which are usually the pots and the connectors. When the soldering starts to go bad, that can promote intermittent connections, bad connections, causing your signal to cut out. While I have the control board out, I'm going to clean the control panel because it's easier to do so when there's no pots sticking out. Now we're going to move on to the preamp tube board. And what I'm going to do is replace these four filter capacitors. These caps provide the power to the preamp circuit. And then I'm going to resolder predominantly the tube sockets the connectors, complete resolder of this board. 
And then I'm also going to clean these tube sockets. So let's get started. Alright, so these are the old filter caps, 22 microfarad at 450 volts, and I'm going to use my trusted FNTs, 22 microfarad at 500. All right, so now I'm going to put this board back in, then I'm going to put the preamp tubes in and install this board back in. I'm going to go ahead and replace these 100 ohm 5 watt resistors and the reason why I'm doing that is because there was an output tube failure and these resistors are affiliated with the high voltage for the screens on the output tubes. So it's just common practice. You just want to make sure that the components that are controlling the tubes are up to date, they're working right, they're in good condition. If there's a tube failure, it could also damage the affiliated components. So that's why we're going to go ahead and replace these.
And I'm going to do that with all six power tubes. All right, I've got the tube sockets resoldered and the new screen resistors are in. So that's pretty much all of the circuit board work that we have to do. So just to recap here, we've got all the boards back in. We've got the screen resistors installed. We've got the output tubes resoldered. We've got the preamp tube board resoldered. This board has been serviced. I did clean the pots off camera. I realized I forgot to shoot that. So now we're just going to tighten down these nuts and replace the output tubes, bias it up, and then we'll be ready to test. All right, so now we're going to remove these output tubes. Unfortunately, they are the PB branded tubes, which is so cool, but at least two of them are pretty fried, so it's time to put in a fresh set. And now I'm going to use these Softec 5881s as replacements. So I'm going to install those and bias up the amp. I will, before I install them, actually I'll clean and tighten all these tube sockets. And then that'll be the last of the service. y'all thanks for tuning in i hope you enjoyed this video it was really fun to make and really fun to work on this amp and enjoy it after the fact i'm excited to continue to be putting out repair videos for you guys if you haven't checked it out yet um, go watch my interview video with the audio specialist i'm really excited to continue putting out these interview videos as well Stay tuned for one later this month with Grayson's Toontown in Montrose, California. It's going to be a really great video. If you want to stay up to date with things I'm working on, follow me on Instagram at Fazio Electric. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time.